Thanks, Mike. Coach, you come in to this season, Big East favorite. You win six straight. You lose six straight. And in between there, you, you lose Ryan Kalkbrenner for a few. Now you find yourself on a three-game win streak. Are you exhausted yet? <laughs> <laughs> i tell you, that six-game losing streak takes a lot out of you. But, uh, you know, our guys have continued to fight and, uh, you know, persevered through some adversity with Kalkbrenner being out. And, you know, the silver lining is some other guys got some opportunities. They're better because of it. But it's certainly good to have the big fellow back and healthy. Well, today you have a UConn team that you, a lot of similarities, multiple bigs, great guard play like you guys have. Also, not afraid to get up and down. What do you, how do you approach uh, this UConn team today? Yeah, I mean, they're different, certainly, than last year's team. You know, this, this team, you know, thrives in transition. Last year, you didn't necessarily have to worry about that as much unless you turned it over. And, but, you know, they'll really push it. And, you know, we got to get to Hawkins in transition. And obviously, the sonogo Kalkbrenner matchup, I think, looms large. And, you know, then just trying to contain Jackson. I think he does so much for their team. Uh, he's so good with the basketball. And, uh, you know, he's one of the best athletes in the country. And, and then we got to find a way to survive on the backboards or hope it bounces to us or something because they are one physical rebounding team. Coach, thanks for your time. Good luck today. Thanks, Donnie. All right, Mike, back to you. All right, you know, uh, UConn got off to a rocket start. They ascended. Creighton's been more like a roller coaster, as you heard Donnie talking about. Six-game winning streak. That's followed by a six-game slide. Uh, they gotten back on track, winning three straight, heading into today. See what happens against UConn. Busy day of college hoops, and it is a big one in the Big East to get the party started. The Creighton Blue Jays, the preseason pick to win the conference. They're in stores, Connecticut, to take on the fourth-ranked UConn Huskies at Gamble Pavilion. And a pleasant Saturday to everyone at home. I'm Brandon Gaunt, and he's Donnie Marshall. This is interesting. I mentioned Creighton preseason favorites to win the league. They struggled, though, but now they're playing better. They've won three in a row. UConn was 14-0. Now they've lost two straight, so they're trying to pick the pieces yeah, up. They're all over the map. Halfway through, so much has already happened with both teams. One team, I would say, trending one way, and the other just the, the opposite. But I will say, you got to throw the records out. The last couple of games, forget about it. These two teams match up really, really well. Who's going to get stops? Because both teams can score, but who can defend the best? That's the team that's going to win. And, of course, why? Watching the big man inside, that'll be a big focus in this ball game. Jeep starting lineups, Jeep, there's only one. And those big men, Ryan Kalkbrenner of the Blue Jays and Adama Sonogo, the preseason player of the year in the Big East for the Yukon Huskies. Greg McDermott, 13th season, 5-0 against Yukon. Creighton has not lost to the Huskies since the Huskies rejoined the Big East. And on the other sideline, Dan Hurley, fifth season as the UConn head coach, and you can just kind of feel the energy right now in Gamble Pavilion. Yeah, the guys in the studio are, are so right. Defensively, UConn has to get some stops. You can't just chase guys around and hope they're going to give it back to you. Talking to Greg McDermott before the game, he said, you know, coaches, we're not that smart. We, we have to get stops at the right time. I know it's simple. Whoever scores more is going to win, but with these two high-powered teams, it's getting stops at the right time. It's not allowing runs to start the game before half, right when you come out of half. There are four times where you really have to slow down the other team and then up towards the end of the game. And it's going to be so important who can establish themselves on the defensive end against these two scoring, high-power high scoring teams. Our officials, John Gaffney. we will see a lot of trying to get Jordan Hawkins open, and sometimes Jordan Hawkins taking tough shots is better than most guys taking wide open shots. Averages 15 points a game, makes it 3-0 early. Creighton, what an interesting start to their year. They were ranked number 7th, and they lost six mm. games in a row, but now they've won three straight, and a big reason. Here's Alexander. He had that huge game Christmas Day against DePaul. Kicks it across to Nimhard. And a rebound of Kaluma offensive board. This is where I want Kaluma to score. You got guys scrambling, you do the work. That'll be the that will be the, the matchup you look at. Bryce Hopkins had his way with the kicks. Does Jordan Hawkins sophomore from just outside of DC? Shireman cut up and kicks it out top. Sold out crowd as it always is here at Gamble. 10,000 on hand. Back door to Kaluma. Kaluma collects. Blocking foul. Count the bucket. Sonogo tried to take the. 
Kalkbrenner, of course, the other great shot blocker, set the screen here. Nimhard gets downhill and finishes. So quick. And that's one of the issues I think UConn has had the last few games is coming from that high post. If Kalkbrenner is allowing him to get down there because he's crashing to the, the front of the rim, Luma has to understand this is one dribble and I have to let this thing go. Donovan Klingen, a freshman from Bristol, Connecticut. I mentioned 7'2", 265 pounds. There's Shireman, and the transfer knocks it down. He started his career at South Dakota State, and he's a good one. Oh, I love his energy. Not a broken record to player, but the extra pass is huge. Up top. Well, if you can't shoot the three, lob it up to the big fella, and he's fouled. Nimhard lost it. Picked up, though, by Kaluma. Kaluma thought about it. Caravan right there in his pocket defensively. Shot clock at two. And wow. somehow, Kaluma wow. reverses it from Calcaterra. Man, Donnie, we've already had seven <laughs> lead changes in this game. Oh. Nice finish from Ryan Nibhard. Just so cute down there, crafty. Yeah, doesn't need to come back to the left. He's going to go underneath the defender's arm. And those are plays that... You don't really crack backside defensively because they have athleticism back there. Falconer's not going to really beat you in a one on one situation like Sonogo. They got to find a way to get him involved more. Here he hands it off to Shireman. Shireman penetrates, fades. That's his bread and butter. And there's a great example. Communication has to be so good in transition against UConn because they have so many guys that keep pressure on you on the perimeter and are allowed to just pull up in transition. Kaluma hoping to quiet the crowd, and he does. Really does have a nice NBA-ready game. He just has to the jump hook falling away outside of the paint. Can't do much better than that. So they'll go 14 to the 32. Mitchell, open three, and yeah. there is the first triple of the game for Creighton. Much needed. Really good job by Shire. Mm -hmm. Kaluma blocked. But they're going to say count it. It's goaltending on Sonogo. Ready for that level. But they also have asked, is he strong enough? And, you know, if you look back at guys, Ray Allens and Rip Hamiltons and Jeremy Lambs, Rudy K, they never really probably gained more than 10, 15 pounds their entire career. So every player can't be built like LeBron James. Yeah. And you don't want every player to be built like that. I'm not sure Jordan Hawkins needs that. He needs Andre Jackson comes from not quite Superman up and down and vertical or horizontal. It's everywhere. And there he is affecting the shot, but still Shireman able to shoot it over the top. It's a nice matchup. I, the, just I'd like to have Lincoln near Omaha, where Creighton is located, of course, as a state championship quarterback and all-state basketball player there. And now taking another NBA range three, and that one he knocks down. We'll allow him to take one or two of those because you no know good things are going to happen. Huskies with a ball out of the timeout. Trying to stop their two-game losing skid. Newton driving, and you don't do that to Kalkbrenner. <laughs> you got to draw Kalkbrenner and then drop it off. On the other Woo! end, that's a tough finish for Ryan Nimhard. I love that. No hesitation. Alexander to give Creighton the lead. Yes! The Blue Jays back in front. Beautiful out-of-bounds underplay by Greg Mc McDermott. Good pass into the corner. Tristan Newton off the side of the iron. Shireman with a rebound. Oh, Newton got his hand on it. But Kalkbrenner able to save a turnover. And Kalkbrenner rim running and throwing it down. Plenty of time. Four minutes for Creighton. Two possessions. The Huskies will snap their two-game losing skid, and they defeat the Blue Jays 69-60. And the conference preseason player of the year led the way. Sonogo with 26 points and nine rebounds. And it is the first win in program history for UConn over Creighton, Downing. Yeah, it was really a, a, a complete game. There, were, there was a, a little lull there for UConn, and Hurley said, listen, you got to show toughness. You got to be tough on the glass. They responded, and that really was the difference for UConn, pounding the glass at both ends of the floor. And 
Creighton just couldn't keep up, never could get their feet out of the mud. In the final 13-45 of this game, Creighton shot three for 21 from the floor, and UConn gets the victory. Fantastic job by our crew, headed up by Brad Weimer, our producer, Derek Manning, our director. For Donnie Marshall, I'm Brandon Gaughan. We'll send you to Mike Hill in Los Angeles right after this. You're watching Piggy's Basketball on Fox.